Hi, welcome to another episode of Wine by Night. Tonight we're going to be talking about Sangiovese and we're not going to be talking about Chianti however because Chianti is a larger broader region and I think it needs to be sectioned down into a little couple different videos if you will. So again we're going to talk about Sangiovese tonight um, but I want to touch real quick on the designations that come DOC and DOCG and what those differences are just so you can kind of know because I'll touch on them at the very end as well which makes this a little important. So DOC is the classification that you'll see on some Italian wines and what that means is it's grown within a specific geographical location and then certain grapes can be used to obtain that designation. Now DOCG is that exact same but a little bit more strict. So it's the same geographic location, it's still only permitting certain grape varieties to be used, but then it also has to be bottled in that geographic location, so it can't be shipped to another spot. And then it can also be subject to a tasting by the Ministry of Agriculture. So those are all important things. But today we're gonna to be talking about Sangiovese and specifically in the Tuscan area, we're gonna be talking about Brunello's. Um, so Brunello di Montalcino needs to be 100% Sangiovese. And with that, it's stipulated that it needs to be held for five years to age. And two of those years need to be in oak before it's even released. And then you have um, Vino Noble di Montepulciano. And that's important because those ones can be a blend. They don't have to be 100% Sangiovese. Equally great, both from the same area. So when you see Vino Noble, Montepulciano, don't confuse that Montepulciano with the grape of Montepulciano di Abruzzo. Those are two different things. So it can kind of be confusing when you're first starting off on those. But tonight specifically, we're gonna be talking about Brunello di Montepulciano. So we're looking at this one right here, which is Il Veltro. It's a Brunello di Montepulciano. This is coming from the Montesino area, which is just south of Siena. And in that, this particular style of wine, Brunello, it needs to be aged five years minimum before it can be released. So the one I'm drinking tonight is a 2011. So it would not have even been available for purchase until 2016. So it has to be kept back for five years. Now, these wines, Sangiovese in its own, is a high acidic grape, and it has medium, medium plus tannins in that, typically. You can find certain things, again, because a winemaker can throw his influence or her influences in, which can definitely change the style of the wine that you're going to try. However, this particular one, I'd be expecting some things like rustic notes, some bright cherry, good tannin structure, good acidity with that. Also, little bit of floral, little bit of like spice notes, whether it's a baking spice or something. So again, this is a wine that's intended to age. And you can look up online of uh, folks put out like wine enthusiasts and stuff. They put out charts to tell you about the year and how they rank those wines, whether it's a drink now, hold it, or drink and hold kind of thing. So it gives you a good indication. And then it's trial and by error because it comes down to what you specifically like. So this one I have uh, decanted into my decanter, some of it just so that I can open it up a bit. And I also poured some into my glass. And already Sangiovese isn't typically a huge aromatic grape, but this one does have aromas. They are muted because it was just open. But again, if you're looking at that color on there, I don't know if you can really see it, it's kind of got like a brick hue to it. It's what I would call a garnet. It's ruby, but it's got some brown tinges to it, so it's not quite ruby. But again, it's very thin, like you can see right straight through this glass of wine. And on the nose, you get some earthy nuances, a little bit of that forest floor in there. You get some cherry, some dried currant is what I'm picking up definitely the earthiness and there's like that little hint of violet that's still there a little perfumey it has really high acidity to it the tannin structure is there I'd still say they're a little on the green side underripe. they're a little bit grippy 
quite astringent still. So this one, even though it's a 2011, definitely has much more aging potential to it. Really glad I have a couple other bottles of the 2011. Um, also, one of the things that you kind of want to know about this wine is if you're having a bad year as climate changes and those kind of things, or the harvest isn't as great, the growers who have Brunello di Montesino or the um, Vin Noble di Multipliziana, they can choose to declassify their wines. So they can go down from the DOCG to DOC. So that gives them areas where then they could add a little bit more grape varieties to it because a Brunello has to be 100% Sangiovese where they can go down and those wines when they choose to declassify on a year because maybe it's not one that they want to create a vintage for for a Brunello they can classify them as Rosso de Montalcino, Rosso de Montepulciano. So those are things, and they'll be followed by the DOC. So those are indications of the quality levels. And some vineyards, maybe they have an extra harvest and they're like, we're not gonna make a Brunello this year, but we're gonna make some Rosso's because of cash flow. There's a multitude of reasons why they would do that that I will not pretend to understand right now until I've talked to some winemakers who have actually done that. This one though, on the palate, it still needs to open up quite a bit. So how you can help that is you can definitely s swirl and the decanter helps on ones like this. But yeah, definitely good tannin structure to that. There's enough fruit flavors that you're getting, those cherries, the black, the red, the currants. Little bit of earthiness in there too, like there's like a a softness to it as well. So it's starting to settle down a little bit in the bottle, but again, this one could age for a couple more years. So I hope that if you're enjoying these videos, listening to me kind of break wine down and how I think about it, you'll go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and possibly share it out with a few of your friends. Thanks so much. I really enjoy doing these wine talks. So I hope you'll join me again on this journey. Cheers.